So today we're going to be making a to-do list app that will let you add items that you'd like to do and then remove them once you finish them. So for example, I could write, write English essay and then add that and it will appear in my to-do list. And then I can add another task like do the dishes and then that will also get added. And then once I finish these tasks, I can remove them from my list by clicking on them. All right, so the first thing we're gonna want on our screen is a label to tell the user that they need to put in a task. So let's get the label and make it say, enter a task. All right, and then below that, we're going to want to put a text box to give the user space to put in their task. All right, and then we're going to change where it says hint for text box one. That's what's going to appear in the box in kind of gray text. And I'm just gonna get rid of that so it looks a little bit better. And then lastly, we're going to need a button that acts as a submit button so that we know when they're done typing in their task. And I'm gonna change the text on that to say submit. All right, and then we're going to also need a list view and that's going to display our list of tasks. So go ahead and drag that over. And I often find that the font on this is a little bit too small. So I'm just gonna change the text size to 28. All right, and the last thing that we're going to need to add is TinyDB. And TinyDB acts as a database that allows us to store information on different uses of the app. And that's going to be important in this case because whenever the user uses the app again, we wanna make sure that we've remembered the tasks that they put in last time. And if we just use a variable, that's not gonna work because every time the app initializes, all the variables are reset to their initial values. So we need to be able to store this list of tasks always in our TinyDB and we can access it so that nothing ever changes in there if the user tries to use the app on a different day. So to get TinyDB, we're going to go under storage and drag it over. All right, let's go to the coding. So the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is even though we are using TinyDB, we do still need a variable to keep track of our list of tasks. And that's because we can't directly add a task or remove a task to something that's in TinyDB. It just doesn't work that way. So we're going to need to have a variable that will allow us to do that. So let's go under variables here and get initialize global name too. This name here is asking for the variable name, so I'm going to make that tasks. And to start off, we want it to just be an empty list. So that's going to be create empty list. Okay, so the first um, thing we're going to add here after that is a um, responding to when the user clicks that submit button. Because when they click that submit button, that means they've just entered in a new task. So we want to update that and add it to the task list and show it on that list view. So let's first go under button once and get um, when button one dot click so we can tell when they've clicked that button. Okay. So um, the first thing that we're gonna want to do when they click the button is to add that new task to our tasks list. So we're going to go under lists and get add items to list. This is asking for both a list and an item. Our list is tasks, so we're going to mouse over that and then we can get get global tasks. And our item is whatever they put in that text box. So we can get that by going over to text box one and getting down here is textbox1.text. So that's gonna get us whatever they typed in. All right, now we've added that to tasks, but we also now need to update our TinyDB because we've changed tasks. So let's go in our TinyDB and we're going to use the block that says call value because that's going to allow us to store the TinyDB version of tasks and with the new um, updated tasks list that now has this new task that the user just added. So let's get that. And we can see that it's asking for two things. It's asking for a tag and the value to store. 
the tag is going to be, it's kind of um, analogous to a variable name. It's what we're calling that value so that we can retrieve it later on. So I'm going to call this um, DB tasks. And the values to store is just going to be our task list. Okay, so we've added this new task to our tasks list. We've updated tinyDB to have that new value. But now what we need to do is also update our list view so that new task will appear on the list that's showing the user all the tasks that they need to do. So let's go under list view one and choose set list view one dot elements two. Okay. And we're, what are we setting the elements to? Well, that's just going to be our get global tasks list, right? Because that has the new updated value. So we've covered the case in which the user adds a new task. How do we handle the case in which the user is done with the task? They've finished it and they want to get it off their list. Well, first of all, they're going to signal to us that they want to finish a task by clicking on it in the list view. So we know we're going to need something related to list view. Let's go under there and see if there's anything helpful. Well, there's list view one dot after picking, so that's going to um, trigger an action as soon as the user picks something from list view one. So let's get that. And what we put in this is actually going to be very similar to what we had over here. And I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure it out for yourself and see if um, we get the same answers. All right, so I'm gonna go over it now. The first thing we wanna do is instead of adding an item to tasks, we're going to be removing an item. So we're going to go under lists and there's one down here, remove list item, list and index. So it's asking for a list. That's the list that we're trying to remove something from and that's just global tasks. I'm gonna copy and paste this. Now things get a little different here because whereas in the first case it was asking for an item, so directly what that task was called now it's asking for the index, so that makes things a little bit trickier, but we'll see that it's not actually too hard to deal with because the index is just the position of that task in our task list. How do we figure that out? Well, if we go under list view one, there's one that says um, list view one dot selection index, and that in fact just tells us the index in our list view that our um, selection was at. And that's exactly what we want here. Great, so now we're going to re be removing that element in the list view from our list. Now again, we're actually just gonna do the exact same thing we did over here, where we update our tinyDB entry with the new tasks list, and we're going to refresh our list view so that we can update it with the fact that we've now removed that task. So I'm gonna copy and paste this one and this one. Okay, great. So at this point, you might be wondering why we have this whole tidydb thing because we're never actually doing anything with it other than updating it when we change tasks. Whenever we initialize the screen, we don't want to just have our tasks be an empty list again. We want tasks to be whatever was in tidydb from a previous round. So let's go under screen one and get when screen one dot initialize. So this is going to be when the user enters the app. So when the screen initializes, our tasks list is automatically going to be an empty list. And we don't want that if the user has used the app before. We want it to now take on whatever it was the last time they used it. And we can access that because we had stored that value in tinyDB. So we're going to first need to get set global tasks to and we're going to need another um, operation with tinyDB, so let's go under there. And instead of using the store value, which allows us to update an entry in tinyDB, we're going to use get value, which allows us to retrieve something from tinyDB. So let's pull that down. Now again, it's going to ask us for our tag, and our tag is just DB tasks because that's what we named it before. So let's get that. And what's up with the second thing, value if tag not there? Well, just as it says, that's going to be what we use if that tag doesn't exist in tinyDB. And it's not going to exist in tinyDB when we use the app for the very first time.
because the first time we use the app, we're not going to reach these blocks before. So we're never going to create a DB task. So in that case, the, ta the DB task is not going to exist in our tiny DB. But we don't want to make that empty quotes. Instead, we want to make it an empty list. So I'm going to take that away and get the create empty list because that means they've never used the app before, so they've never added any new items. Great, and the last thing that we want to do is to update our list view so that if they're using the app again, those tasks that they added before will actually appear there. So we can just copy and paste this block. And we're done, so go ahead and test it out. You should see that the adding and removing works well, and then also if you close the app and reopen it, it will remember what tasks you put in.